Hello everyone, my name is Michael Baron as Sharky and welcome back to the Shark Tank. Today I have a very important video for everyone that plays classic Tetris is because I'm going, me and Coffee are going to be showing you guys how to do some stuff like this. So if you want to learn how to do spin tucks and crazy maneuvers like what it just showed you, be sure to stay tuned and watch this video. First, before we can understand how exactly to do these spins, we need to understand how all the pieces rotate. Now, for those of you that wouldn't know, maybe you're watching this for the first time and you don't necessarily know about Tetris, there are seven pieces, the S, the Z, the O, J, L, I, and T. These seven pieces all rotate in either clockwise or counterclockwise. However, certain pieces, they only have two rotations just because of the way that the pieces are formed. So let's go ahead and get into our first piece. So we are gonna start off with the Z piece. Now the Z piece is one that is going to be used for Z spins and Z spin tucks. It rotates the same way whether you press B, which is for counterclockwise, which is the button on the left, or A, which is for clockwise, which is the button on the right. So whether you press B or A, it's going to do the same rotation. Now, the S piece is actually extremely similar to the Z piece in that they both only have one rotate, well, two rotations and, you know, the vertical position or the horizontal position. And these are both accomplished by using the same buttons, either counterclockwise with B or clockwise with A. So as, it, as is being shown right now, it's really just, you know, one rotation. This is going to allow you to do things like the S spin as well as the Suko, which Coffee will be going over the Suko later on. Now the O piece, it, it's really simple. You can technically rotate it. It makes a sound when you are rotating. However, it does nothing. So you can't pole vault with it or anything of that nature. It just is like it is. Yes. Now we go into the first piece that has a little bit more orientations. For this particular piece, since no rotation is the same, we have four orientations in the piece. And because of that, that means that the clockwise and the counterclockwise end up rotating in different positions, meaning that more spins are possible. So first we're going to be going over the counterclockwise. Now this one is used for either doing a J spin from left to right, or also doing the spin that I like to do whenever you have like a two wide gap on your stack. We'll be going over that later. So you have that is this is for the counterclockwise rotations. And then now we go into the clockwise rotations, which is going to allow you to do a couple of things. Like let's say you have a two wide gap, then you do a clockwise rotation to make it a one a one a, a one high gap, which will allow you to either go for a J tuck or an S spin. So both of these rotations are a little bit different than you guys should have been just seeing them on your screen. And obviously when we get into the spins, I'll be discussing over the rotations in order to do them as well. Now to talk about the T piece, also known as the piece for the glorious T spin, which is all the rage in modern Tetris games. Now for Nestris, you can't do T spin triple, so not knowing how to do the specifics of that isn't going to hurt you. However, there are two key rotations, just like the J piece that we went over. You have your counterclockwise rotation, and you also have your clockwise rotation. Your counterclockwise is what's going to be used to be doing T spins from left to right. Now your clockwise is what's going to be used from doing from T-spins from right to left and a spin tuck that will also be going over. The L rotations are similar to the J rotations with the small caveat that the L is flipped from the J. So just like all the other pieces, B is counterclockwise and A is clockwise. With this, you are able to do L spins as well as kind of like these little maneuvers that you can do to try and get you out of a little bit of a situation and a couple of unique ways to kind of fill in some holes on the left hand side via an L spin. But that's really their all is to kind of the L spin or the L rotation. We'll be getting into the spins much later. So one thing about the I piece before I go into how it rotates is it does have similar notations to the S and the Z piece, meaning that it has two positions it can be in, vertical or horizontal, but all the rotations happen around the third Mino, or the third Mino is like the axis for rotation. This is important as it can decide how you can I spin on the left or right, as well as 
it also is kind of like why it takes shorter distance for you to get the eye vertical to the right hand side as opposed to the eye vertical to the left hand side. So like I said, that the counterclockwise and the clockwise rotation work the same. They're interchangeable here with the eyepiece and yeah. <laughs> But now that we have discussed the rotations of all the pieces, we are going to be going into our first few spins. So now we're going to go into the Z spin and the Z spin tug. First, I'm going to build up for the Z spin on level 18. Now I'll walk you guys through how to do it on level zero. And this is going to go the same for the spin tug. So as you see, I've already built up for the Z spin. Z piece comes, boom, hit the rotation. Now to set up the Z spin, first you need to have kind of like this gap where it looks like you can also slide a T piece. And then as soon as the piece drops, hit A or B into that location and then boom. One of the visual cues that you can use for this is whenever it kind of hits the bottom level and then you would press A or B. Now the thing about Z spins is that they can also be hit in the middle of a stack. So as you can see, I'm just kind of building up on level zero to show you how to hit it. Z piece comes after this T piece or after that, those, these couple of S's. And then as soon as it hits the bottom of the stack, then we're going to just press A or B and it rotates into place. Now that you understand the fundamentals of the Z spin, we're going to be going into the Z spin tuck. And all it is with the Z spin tuck is you are pressing left in addition to the rotation A or B in order to get it that one extra space. So this is a pattern that you can start to see in some of your stacks. Maybe you might've made a misdrop and this is like the only way to fix it or something of that nature. But with the Z spin tuck, as soon as the Z piece falls and you have this uh, gap as shown on the screen right now, you'd press a button and hit left and then it'll fill in the gap. Now, like I do with the Z spin, the Z spin talk I'm gonna show on level zero. In order to kind of set up this formation, you need like a place where it looks like you can Z spin except for everything is shifted one cell to the left. So as you see, I've built this up right here. As soon as the Z piece comes, you would hit you know left and A or B as a rotation and then it just snaps right into place. Now, this can also be done in the middle of the stack. You don't just necessarily have to be at the bottom. And when you're doing the middle of the stack, it's the same thing. Wait till it's at the bottom, hit left and rotate at the same time, snaps into place. And that's all basically you need to really know about Z spins and Z tucks. As they, because of the way the rotation system works on Nestris, there really isn't much else that you can do with them. Next, we're gonna be moving on to S spins and S spin tucks. So now we're gonna go into the S spin. Now, as we went over the rotations earlier, Z and S is they only require one rotation. So with the S spin, you have to wait till it lines up. And then as soon as it lines up in the right position, you just hit A or B and it kind of spins into place. This can be done on the ground or floating. Generally, the ones on the ground are easier to do because you have a visual cue. Now, in situations where you want to use the S-Spin, in my opinion, the S-Spin is one of the most useful spins that you can learn the patterns for and learn how to execute. Is because, let's say you set up a JP dependency where you need a J-Tuck in order to fill it in. If you don't get the J, but you do get an S, you can hit an S-Spin. It does require you to burn a line. However, your stack is still safe and you're not waiting for a J that might never come. So like I said, we know we do this on level 18 and then we'll be heading over to level zero. So as demonstrated on level 18, the S spin is really simple because, you know, the A and B button do the same rotation. All you have to do is set up something that was similar to what we set up on 18. Wait till an idea, wait till the S piece comes. And then right when you see in the middle, when you have a vertical, they line up, just hit A or B and then it will complete the spin motion. This can also be done with another pattern that I like to do whenever I see it where you just maybe like might have uh, misdropped an L and then you just hit an S spin to resolve it burning one line and as well opening up the hole that you might have created. Now go building up on top of the S spin foundation that we just laid out for you like in the last example, we're gonna be talking about the S spin tuck. Now at this particular formation, it is better to do a spin tuck with a T piece, which we will go over eventually. But all the S spin tuck is, you're doing a same S spin and clicking left, similar to a Z spin and clicking to the left. So the, situ the pattern for it is being displayed 
and that's all you really do is you know you do a spin and as well as hit left this is still going to set up a situation where you're going to have to tuck a piece underneath in order to cleanly resolve it so as i said the formation for it is pretty simple it's similar to what you need to do for a t spin tuck which is the better option but if you don't get the t for the spin tuck then notice that you can also do this with a s spin tuck so you get the s in the position as soon as it comes you do a regular s spin but you also click left at the same time that way it just snaps into place and so now we're going to go into the t spin which is also going to go into the t spin tuck as well so the t spin is one of the easiest spins to do and nestress all you have to do is see which direction your t spin is opening and you rotate counterclockwise or clockwise so for example in this case since our t spin is opened up to the right we would rotate clockwise or press the a button when we do the t spin if this was mirrored on the other side then we would press the b button when we do the t spin because the T-spin is easy to hit, I don't feel like there is a real need to show a T-spin on level zero. However, I will be showing this next thing that we are going to be doing with the T-piece, which is one of the mini T-spin tucks that you can do. Building up on the foundation of the T-spin, this is now the T-spin tuck. Now, previously we discussed the formation for the S-spin tuck, and the T-spin tuck, at least this particular one that I'm going over, is going to be something similar to that, except for in order to pull it off you would also have to move it over to the left and rotate counterclockwise meaning you press the b button and pressing left at the same time so then you would essentially you're laying it flat and then you're tucking it underneath the space so just to reiterate what we said on level 18 level zero you set up this kind of overhang which you would either do a spin tuck or really what you want to do is a t spin tuck in this case the t piece falls you hit the b button press left and then it will snap underneath there it kind of has like this weird kind of sliding animation i guess next we'll move on to everyone's visually favorite spin the eye spin now the eye spin it's it's a pretty easy spin to hit once you recognize the patterns however there is something important about the patterns that and in performing the spin and related spin tucks that you have to understand back in the rotations we discuss how the eye piece rotates around the third piece like the third piece or the third mino is essentially its axis well knowing that you're able to do spins in certain setups so the setup for a right well eye spin or a eye spin on the right most side is different than a I spin on the leftmost side. In order to perform the I spin on the right side, you need to have a four wide gap and well not necessarily four wide gap but a gap that can fit a horizontal long bar and that gap you need to place the eyepiece in, in the third column. Once the eyepiece touches the ground you press either A or B and then it will spin the piece filling in that gap and if you have it to where it will burn a line it will burn a line. On the left side, the setup is similar, however, it's a bit different, as opposed to going to the third to the second one on the left, which you might think you would do in order to hit the spin, because the way the rotation system works, you would need to go on the column closest to the little hole that we have formed, and then hit either A or B once it hits the ground, thus performing the eye spin on the left hand side. Now that we finished up with eye spins, we'll be going into our second to last formation before we go into advanced and more niche spins and spin tucks and things of that nature, which is going to be the L spin. So now we are going to go over two cases for the L spin where it is ideal to use them in. And obviously there are other situations that could happen that you can use them in, but these are the two primary ones. One of the more common ones is whenever you have kind of like a too high gap on your right hand side, where either you're looking for an O or an S piece or something of that nature to resolve it now another way that you can resolve it if you don't get either one of the those particular pieces that are ideal for your build is to use an l spin what happens is as soon as you get the l you would rotate it counterclockwise to put it in the vertical position after it's in the vertical position once it gets down to the bottom height the bottom one of the two highs you would then press b for the clockwise rotation resulting in either a single burned or a delayed single 
To execute the second spin, you need to have this formation kind of built up on your left side or technically anywhere in the center of your stack. First, you will put it into the vertical position by rotating clockwise or pressing the A button, and then you rotate it counterclockwise once it kind of hits the bottom of the stack, leading it to go to this burn, also opening up some options for you as well. So for the demonstration on level zero, we're gonna be doing an L spin with a visual cue. So like I said, you would rotate it counterclockwise or press B to putting it put it in the vertical position. As soon as this L piece hits the stack, you would then press A, which is gonna kick that left hand side up forcing it to burn either a single or do a delayed single if you haven't already filled in the rest of that line. Now for the spin that is done on the other side, it's kind of like reversed inputs. Instead of pressing B or counterclockwise to go into a flat vertical position, you're gonna be going down into more of a pointing vertical position with the L piece by pressing A. Right as soon as you kind of see it hit the stack, then you would press B, which is counterclockwise, which will flick the other side up and help burn out that single or set up a delay single. So this last one I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be real brief, not gonna be really any level zero, as this is one that if you understand how the piece rotates, you should be able to pull off in a regular game. However, this one basically all it is, is let's say you have this particular situation where you need to either like lay the L flat. However, the way your board is, it's not gonna let you lay it flat. First, you would put it in the vertical position by pressing B or counterclockwise, and then right as soon as you clear that little barrier from stopping you from laying it flat initially, you would just press A, which is the clockwise, which will kind of fit it into that particular, that particular gap that you might have had. Now moving on to the last one, which is also one that I tend to like a lot because the spins are a, a little bit more unique than the ones that we've gone over, and this is my personal opinion, but we'll be going over J-spins and J-spin tucks. The J-piece is probably the most versatile piece when it comes to spinning in Estrus. I'm going to be showing you a lot of spins as well as one really cool spin tuck that you guys saw at the beginning that a lot of people didn't even think was possible. And I didn't think it was possible either until I saw JD attempt it at CTWC 2019 up against Green Tea. So this next spin I'm gonna show you is similar to the L spin in that it also can be used to fill in a too high gap. However, an important difference between this one is in order to perform it, your column nine needs to be at least one mino lower than your column eight where the too high gap is. So first things first, you'd have to start off in a down vertical position. All you have to do that is you would press B or counterclockwise. And as soon as it hits the bottom of the stack, you press counterclockwise or B again, and it will kick itself up doing the spin, burning out the bottom line, keeping keeping what you might have a double well, keeping that open as well as, you know, burning the line. Now this next spin for the J, generally you want a Z piece or a T piece. However, if you don't get neither and your stack is starting to get high, one way to burn this down is by doing a J spin. So similar to the last one, we would go counterclockwise with our first rotation to put it in a J vertical pointing down position. And then as soon as it hits the stack, we then would press clockwise, kicking the right side up, burning out a single, and it, we are going to have to burn out a single after performing this. However, there are many ways that you can burn out the single and ways to be efficient and s stuff like that. So this is just another way you can solve this particular situation. Now, this next one is one that can be used in a situation where your column nine is built up. So you can't do the J spin that we showed off first. However, you can do another kind of J spin that will end up burning a single or a double, which will also result in you have to either do a J tuck or an S spin. So first, you, all you would do is you would start off rotating counterclockwise or pressing B to put it in the vertical down position. And then right as soon as it hits the stack, you would press clockwise or A. That will result in a double burn and giving you an overhang to go for either an S spin or a J tuck. And now for the J spin tuck, the one you all probably are wondering, how can I do this? This looks like it'd be impossible to do in Nestris. Well, if you ever find yourself in this particular situation, and this is doable in 19, first things first, you would have to press 
counterclockwise to put it in the G vertical down position. It kind of seems like a lot of spins are being done from this position. And then once you line it up as close to the gap as possible, you would then press clockwise, which is A, and also push it to the left, therefore completing the spin tuck motion. So for the J spin that can go into the Z spin or the T tuck slash T spin gap, you need to first rotate counterclockwise to put it in the vertical down position. And then as soon as it hits the stack, press A, which is the clockwise rotation. So then it, if you do have that entire line filled, it will burn a line and then you'll have to open up the your right well with another piece. Now remember for this particular J spin, in order to perform it, your column nine needs to be at least one Mino lower than your column eight, but you can have it where it's lower down all, all the way down to the bottom. In order to perform this spin, first you start off in the vertical down position, which is acquired by pressing B, which is the counterclockwise rotation. And then right as soon as it hits where it would be the column nine, whether it be one Mino, underneath or all the way infinite as soon as it lines up to roughly around that position then you would press counterclockwise again forcing that left side to kick down burning out a single and keeping your double wide open and last but certainly not least the j spin tuck first you need to this unique pattern set up and you'd have to start off in the J vertical down position, which is acquired by, like we said over and over, pressing counterclockwise or B. Once you have it lined up all the way over to the left and the piece hits the bottom of that area, you would then press A and left, which is clockwise and left, and then it will snap into place. And that will conclude all of our regular spins and spin tucks. Coffee is going to be going into some more of the, some of the more niche maneuvers. And so without further ado, I'll hand, hand it over to him. Hey everyone, I'm Coffee, and I'm going to be going over some more niche and flashy spins you can do in Nestris. We'll start off with the Buko spin named after CTWC competitor, Matt Buko. Here's what it looks like in real time. This spin can be performed with an L piece or a J piece and has a setup roughly resembling this shape. Let's slow it down to see how it's done. Once this L approaches the setup, rotate clockwise, then move the piece left and rotate counterclockwise to perform the spin. You can also do this spin with a J piece and a reflected setup. Here the inputs are reversed. First rotate counterclockwise, then tuck the piece right and rotate clockwise to spin it in. Let's move on to a variant of the Buko spin. This one is known as the Coward Spin due to its decreased difficulty. Here's what it looks like. As you might have seen, this version requires one less input, making it easier, but it takes up more space on the playfield. Let the piece drop horizontally, and then move right and rotate clockwise to spin. Just like the Buko spin, the Coward spin can also be reflected and performed with an L piece. In this case, just move left and rotate counterclockwise instead. Now for the Boiler spin, named after two-time gauntlet champion Jake Boiler. This one is essentially a Buko spin, but with a T piece. This is the basic frame of the setup, though some things may vary. The open units by where you spin the T are crucial. Here you start by rotating clockwise and move left and rotate counterclockwise for the spin. Here's the reflected version. Rotate counterclockwise, then move right and rotate clockwise to spin to the right. The JD spin, named after Joseph Saley aka JDMFX, is a variation of the boiler spin with one less input. Quite like the coward spin, but with a T piece. Let's go over the inputs in slow motion. The T starts out flat, then you move left and rotate counterclockwise. This is what the spin looks like on the other side. Just tap right and rotate clockwise to do the same spin. Now for the Suko spin, whose name comes from the S piece and the Buko spin. This is the setup, which has a notch in the right side so that you can tuck the S and then spin it. 
tuck right and then press either rotate button to spin the S. For the Suko, you actually can't reflect this setup and perform it with the Z piece because of how rotations work in Nestris. To finish it off, we have the Bukoi spin, named after both the Buko spin and the I piece. The setup almost looks like a larger Buko spin setup. It needs this room in order for an eyepiece to fit. The inputs are as follows. Rotate, tuck right, and then rotate again. You can use either button to rotate, because the eyepiece always rotates favoring the right side. And that is all the spins I'm going to be covering. And after that, that will conclude the Nestris Spin Masterclass. Now, first things first, huge shout out to Coffee. He was the one that obviously did all the niche and more flashy spins. Spins that I don't necessarily know all how to do. I do JD spin a lot in casual gameplay. However, the Bukoi, the Buko, the and the Boiler spin are spins that I don't know how to do or haven't performed live yet. So... Anyways, there are also a couple of spins that I left out on my end because I felt like once you understand the basics and the spins that I brought out, you will be able to intuitively figure out the other spins and other spin tucks. And if there ever comes a time where I have to make more going into a little bit more of those spins, if I ever do them in game, then I definitely will. Now, one last thing before I get into my usual outro. Be sure to go check out Coffee. His Twitch, his YouTube, and the Classic Tetris Gangs Discord will be linked in the Discord. And shout out to my first Patreon, subbed at the Exalted Piranha Tier, or Exotic Piranha Tier, Old Tapper. $25 a month. Your support helps me with my content greatly. If you would like to become a Patreon, there will be information down in the description below. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it's really lengthy, and as opposed to Jonas's uh, Spins 101 video, it goes a lot more in depth and shows a lot more of the possibilities that are available with the spins. So if you like this video and you like seeing all the spins illustrated out and me kind of instructing you how to do these spins so then you can learn how to be a little bit more efficient and get out of more sticky situations, then leave a like. Comment down which spin did you think was most interesting outside of the niche spins because obviously all those look cool. But my, I think my personal favorite is the J Spin Tuck. Let me know what yours is down in the comments below. Share it with your friends, especially those that play classic Tetris. This can help them out and help them teach how to teach them how to be more efficient in case they run into certain situations like these, or might be able to increase their survivability because they're able to know it's like, oh, I've seen this pattern before, and they perform a spin or a spin tuck to get out of a sticky situation. And last but not least, while all the videos on my channel aren't tutorials on how to become a better classic Tetris player, even though there are quite a few videos, there's plenty of content here on my channel. If you like it, why not stick around for a bit? Anyways, like I said, be sure to check out all the coffee stuff. This video would not have been as insightful without him. And the next video that's coming up, I think you guys will like it a lot. My name is Michael, better known as this Sharky, and I'll see you all later.